Hi, Zach here. Today I am going to tell a comedy family story. Called I'm underage, but I'm not a child. Oriyama Karen is the daughter of a billionaire businessman, Oriyama Kazuki. She has been treated like a princess from a young age and knows little to nothing about the world outside her mansion. Karen has everything she wants, and her only dream is to marry a prince one day. On the morning of her 16th birthday, her personal bodyguard Kaburaki and the maids wake her up and carry her to the bathroom. Karen, who is still half asleep, doesn't realize she is being picked up. They bathe her and get her ready in her school uniform. After being pampered, she is told that she has received gifts from several billionaires from around the world like Mark Zuckerberg and Bernard Arnault. She is then seated in her limo and driven to school like usual. On her way, her classmate and friend Abina Isuzu brings her flowers. Like Karen, he also belongs to a wealthy family. He has had a crush on her for a long time, but she only thinks of him as a friend. At school. Karen hears the girls gush about a good-looking guy who has just been admitted to the school. She follows them to take a look at him herself. Like the other girls, Karen is also mesmerized by now. Tsurubi's beauty. Watching him play football, she instantly feels attracted to him. Without thinking much about it, she walks to the field and is hit by the ball. The impact almost makes her full when now catches her. Because of the gesture, the princess falls in love with him. In the evening, her parents throw an extravagant birthday party for her. They sing, dance, and have a lot of fun. For her gift, Karen is given a wedding dress. It turns out that the prophet had told her father that she is bound to get married the day after her 16th birthday. The husband will turn Karen into a better person and will provide her lifelong happiness. Karen refuses to marry anyone who is not now. She throws a fit, breaking the utensils and destroying the place without letting her father explain himself. Only after he shows her the picture of her future husband does she realize that she is being married to now. Kazuki has bought her a husband of her choice for her 16th birthday. The following day, she and Nao are at the altar. When they are asked to exchange rings, he claims that since they are keeping their marriage a secret, it is better if they skip that part. Karen is ready to do as he says so she doesn't object. Since they are too young to be married, they have decided to not tell anyone at school. After the wedding, he brings her to his house that only has one bedroom that is the size of her closet at her mansion. She is told that she will have to adjust now that her husband is poor. Karen is skeptical about how two people are going to fit in the house, but she trusts her husband to make her feel comfortable. She is excited about her first night with now, but is confused when he asks her to stay in her side of the room. He reveals that he doesn't love her and only married her because he wanted to inherit her father's wealth. He calls her shallow for choosing him because of his looks and also says that he hates her. Karen falls asleep hoping that everything that happened is just a dream. When she wakes up the next day it is already 10 p.m. She doesn't have a habit of waking up on her own so she is late for school. The landlady tells her that now left early in the morning. Without her, Karen tries to take a shower but doesn't know how to turn on hot water. Getting ready for school is difficult for her without the help of her maids. After struggling to do basic tasks the entire morning, she leaves for school but gets lost in the way. After wandering around the city for hours, she reaches school when it is already over. Isuzu asks her where she had been all day but Karen cannot tell him because then she would have to explain that she got married. When she reaches home at night, a furious now is waiting for her to explain the mess she had made in the house. She cries about not knowing how to do simple tasks which makes him feel bad for her. Starting the next day, he promises to help her get used to the new lifestyle. He teaches her to turn on hot water, to clean using a vacuum cleaner, and to cook instant. Raymond. In only a few days, Karen gets used to her new life. One day, she cooks a meal for him. Which surprisingly tastes delicious. However, now soon finds out that she used almost half of their monthly allowance for the meal. As he starts to panic, Karen simply calls her father, Bazuki, to ask for money. The pair is called to the mansion, where they explain the situation to her father, he offers to help them, but now declines it. He wants to live on a budget and not take advantage of Kazuki's kindness. The parents are impressed by his wise words. At night, the couple stays at the mansion. The next morning when they are about to leave, Karen apologizes to the cooks for always throwing their food away. After she started to cook for herself she realized how difficult of a task it is. Her parents and bodyguard Kaburaki are shocked. They erupt into Cheers claiming that this is the first time she has apologized to anyone. During school lunch, the pair sit at different tables to not seem suspicious. Karen's friend Isuzu notices her. Looking at Nao but doesn't think much of it. When a group of girls surround Nao offering him food. 
She gets jealous and asks them to go away. When she realizes what she did, she makes up an excuse and sits down quietly. A girl named Saya looks at Nao and walks away angrily. Nao calls her by her name which makes Karen even more jealous. On reaching home, she confronts him about Saya, but Nao refuses to talk. When she insists, he storms out of the house. They see each other again in the morning, but do not talk. Karen makes it her mission to find out about Saya and Nao's relationship. She hardly has to do anything because Saya approaches her during lunch break and asks her if she is dating Nao. Karen wants to tell her she is married to him, but she refrains from it. Saya assumes that they are dating and asks her to break up with him immediately. She claims that he is only dating her for money and will leave her once. His school debt is paid. An innocent Karen sees no wrong in dating someone for money. In fact, she is happy to give him some since her father has a lot of it. Now listens to their conversation, delighted that Karen didn't overreact. At home, he helps her dry her hair and is nicer in general. Karen notices the change in behavior, but doesn't say anything. The next day, now finds out that Karen has been passing her tests with the help of her bodyguard and her friend Isuzu. Hence, he starts to tutor her every day. At first, Karen struggles to keep up but she soon gets a hang of it. She even takes notes in class surprising her teacher and classmates. Now agrees to go on a date with her if she gets good grades which encourages her to study harder. One day she is in the library when Isuzu asks her if she is dating someone. Karen tells him she just wants to get better grades, but he has started to suspect her. She gets an A on her next test and is overjoyed. While returning home, a crowd of men in black clothes kidnaps her. They take her to Isuzu's mansion. It turns out that he has found out about her marriage to now and doesn't approve of it. He threatens to tell the school principal about it and get them expelled if she doesn't divorce him instantly. Karen is left shocked. The guy she thought was her best friend turned out to be an obsessive lunatic. Later, she is in one of the rooms of his house when now calls her. He has been looking for her all day and is worried. She tells him everything about what happened with the Suzu and asks him to come to pick her up. Now doesn't think twice before coming to get his wife. He is welcomed by Isuzu's bodyguards, who do not let him see Karen before talking to him. Isuzu knows that Now married Karen for her money. He tells Now that he can never provide Karen with the love and happiness she deserves. Having known Karen since childhood, Isuzu knows everything about her dreams and aspirations. She wanted to dance with her significant other as a princess and wanted to have a grand wedding with hundreds of guests, but Now couldn't even give her that. Now, who has started to fall in love with her, realizes that she deserves someone like Isuzu, who can fulfill all her wishes. Isuzu asks him to divorce Karen if he really cares about her. But now later meets her, she asks him to come home. However, now wants her to stay the night at her parents' house, because his house has no electricity. She retaliates but he agrees to go on a date with her tomorrow and calms her. The next day, they meet on a bridge and go to an aquarium, where Karen had always wanted to visit. Now compliments her outfit, making her blush. They eat several street foods, talk about different things and run around on the beach. In the end, they sit down to talk. Karen lists all the things that she has noticed about Now, like the fact that he hates the noise of utensils breaking. He reveals that his mother used to break stuff when she got mad. So he has developed a hatred for such noises. They promise to support each other for eternity and ring a bell on a shrine. Right after, Now suggests they get a divorce. Karen returns home shocked and devastated. The next day, Now drops out of school and gets into a massive argument with his mother. He wants to do his best to not see Karen. Karen's parents are worried for her, but can do nothing to change Now's mind. In the meantime, Isuzu visits her and asks her to go out with him. He brings her to a palace where they dance as she had always wanted to with her prince. Karen enjoys his company, but knows that she would rather live in a tiny home with Now than in a palace. When they are done dancing, Isuzu proposes to her. Somewhere else, Kaburaki meets Now and gives him the divorce papers. He also hands him a princess book that used to be Baron's favorite. After reading the book, Now gets to know more about what she wants in life. It also makes him realize that he cannot give her up at any cost. He runs to Isuzu's house asking them to stay out of his and Karen's relationship. He appears to be determined about winning her back. Isuzu tells him that Karen refused to marry him because she is in love with Now. He wants her to be happy even if it means helping her get back together with him. Now happily runs back to their house, knowing that Karen would be there. The two finally meet each other and kiss. Karen asks him if he likes her to which Now replies that he has fallen in love with her. Cut to five years later, Karen and Now are getting married yet again. This time, 
The church is filled with guests, and the two exchange rings. In the last scene. They kiss as the crowd erupts in cheers. Subscribe for more videos like this. Turn on the notification, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.